the Ascends at Boston Avenue podcast. My name is Philip Boone, and I use he, him, his pronouns. And I'm Caitlin Drake. I use pronouns she, her, hers. Before we begin, I like to state that the views represented in this podcast are those of the individuals in this conversation and not the official position of Boston Avenue United Methodist Church. We are recording this podcast remotely from our individual homes during the COVID-19 pandemic as we practice physical distancing as a church community. When the decision was made in March to close the church building in response to the COVID-19 pandemic, we knew that our ministries would have to look different. Even though the building is closed, the church is still open, active, and engaged. What does a dispersed church or a church outside a building look like? This is to discuss the ways they have been able to adapt, innovate, and change ministry during this time. Our guests today are Director of Sistema, Jose Luis Hernandez, Reverend Eva Marie Campbell, and Reverend Jen Longston Kellogg. Welcome, everyone. Hi, Philip. Hi, Caitlin. Hey, Jen. We'll start with you, um, especially since you boldly jumped in there with the greeting. One of your passions, I say this as somebody who works closely with you and sees it every day, so maybe not everybody knows this is a passion of yours, but one of your passions is new ministry and fresh expressions within the church. So how has this time of dispersed church, virtual church, I think some people feel like that has shut down avenues. But I think you have come up with ways that's opened up new opportunities for ministry. So can you talk about some of those new ideas, new programs, new activities? Sure. So I'd like to take the chance to say I loved the things that we were doing pre-pandemic. And there are very few things that I'm not grieving that we are not able to do now. But it did give us a chance to stop and take stock of the things that we're doing um, that we were doing when we had full use of the building now and say how effective were those things and are there new things that we can do that aren't just stop gaps during the pandemic time but things that might continue on so one of the things that i had really wanted to do even pre-pandemic was to start a group for people who want to have church outside and have church in a way that's really super casual and intimate and connect with people and not on a Sunday morning, but more in an afternoon or evening when we're done with work and ready to relax. And that's a space that we didn't have a lot of wiggle room before. And now we do. And so I have a group that's starting this evening called Holy Hammock that I'm very excited about. We have a park on the north side of our property. We have trees and a big open grassy area in the park. And I found a group of young members in the church and kind of talked to them about if you could do church um, in a new way that's outside and doesn't look like regular worship, what would you do? And Through that, I found a a couple of people who got excited about hammocking that, did you know hammocking is a verb? Uh, Hammocking is a verb and it is something that I truly enjoy doing. And I found a group of people who either already love to hammock or love the idea of hammocking as a way to connect with each other, also have a little time to contemplate and reflect and to celebrate life in connection with God and with each other. So we are starting Holy Hammock this evening at five o'clock in the park. That's one thing that I'm really excited about, not just that I'm leading it, but that I have found people who feel inspired to create and cultivate sacred space for others that's outside of the building. And they have had the inspiration and the ownership of helping to craft that. And I've been an empowerer uh, rather than doing it myself. So that's one thing I'm excited about. The other group that I'm starting, um, we had our first meeting last night, is an online only group for people who identify as part of the LGBTQ plus community. And that is something um, that in my ministry, even before I arrived at Boston Avenue, was important to me. And it's something that it was on a long list of things I would love to have done pre-pandemic. But post-pandemic, I had, again, this was inspired by somebody who is in the church who um, saw a need and I and came to me and said, hey, could we do something like this? And then I took a little bit of the control of figuring out what that could look like and setting it up but it's going to be a group that is, again, 
I'm not the, the one person leading, I am a facilitator and a, a creator and a cultivator of sacred space. And that group will always be online. Um, the online nature of it was a part of the appeal and the request. And so even when we are able to, to gather back in the building, that's a group that, that coming to the building was gonna be a hindrance anyway. And so removing that as even an option helped get the group started. Excellent, thank you. It's um, so interesting to hear just the creative ways we are starting new ministries during this time. So it was, it was enjoyable to hear what you're doing um, over the next few weeks. So thank you for that. Jose Luis, one of our core values is that we cultivate music, arts, and architecture as a means of, of experiencing God. Sistema is a wonderful ministry that, go, that goes with this particular core value. Can you tell us a little bit about Sistema and then how you have adapted what you are doing through Sistema during this time? Thank you, Philip. It's such a pleasure to be able to join you and my colleagues today. I want to take from something that Reverend Loxton Kellogg just said, uh, which um, really has made an impact, is the phrase cultivate a sacred space. And this is something that we can do with music, with art. Sistema is a vision, it is a philosophy of doing music and doing art in such a way that would bring joy to people, specifically to young people who live on the margins, uh, who don't have opportunities to study music, to have a high quality education. We're able to provide that space, which I think I will start calling it a sacred space from now on, because it is music that can not just help us build community, but also create outcomes like being more resilient, like being curious, like being attuned to beauty uh, in fellowship with others, playing side by side. The concept of Sistema is very simple. Again, using music and art to inspire people and to make them better human beings. The results are very complex because we get so many different iterations of success as each life is very different. One of my mentors, Dr. Jose Abreu, who was the founder of El Sistema in Venezuela back in the 1970s, you know, this ministry has been going on for over 40 years now. And it has expanded beyond South America, all through the United States, 90 plus Sistema inspired programs in our country. Uh, of those programs, I'm going to venture to say that the Boston Avenue program is probably the first or one of the few programs which are nestled in church. You will find these programs in community centers, in boys and girls clubs, in school cafeterias after school, many community hubs. But this is a special one because we are at the church. Dr. Abreu, the founder of Sistema, also said that, and this relates um, very deeply to what we have experienced with the pandemic times. And he said something that really made an impression on me uh, in terms of um, setting up and running your organization. And that is the concept of, the concept of being and not yet being. The idea that organizations never arrive, but are always becoming. So when the pandemic hit, yes, it was startling. It felt like a crisis, but it was kind of business as usual for us, nestled in that philosophy of knowing that organizations never arrive, but are always in a state of becoming. It really allowed us to think this time as a time of opportunity, as opposed to as a time of crisis. So what we did, we got together, and I think this has a lot to do with community. And let me explain how. Trusting that God will lead you to a place of becoming with the resources, with the people, everyone around you at the time of the crisis. And so 
we did that and we had to stop the program obviously in person but our community was able to continue we reached our students via the technological means that we had at the time pretty archaic i think in the next you know several months we developed this huge learning curve about how to use technology but back in day zero, we didn't have a lot to work with, but we trusted that whatever we had at the time would connect with people. You know, so we went to YouTube and created over 200 video lessons. And then one of our teachers um, had an idea of creating a virtual concert. And then another said, oh, I was thinking about that as well. Oh, yes, me too. Oh, I can do... Uh, uh, video editing, I can do audio editing, well, I can model parts on symphonic instruments, I'll do the violin, I'll do the trumpet. Uh, and we put that together. Uh, again, being and not yet being. And lo and behold, 10,000 people saw that concert. So that's just one example of, uh, and, and, and I want to really emphasize this because it is so important, that as organizations are in a state of becoming so are we as people. And these times have really, if, if, if we're attuned both spiritually and physically, mentally, to these opportunities, I think we can grow. And I have seen my colleagues grow at Boston Avenue. I have seen our program grow. I have seen you know, my colleagues, both Kelsey Rooney Dorse, who's our education director and Patty Mitchell, our program services coordinator, I've seen them grow and thrive. And this just makes us better. So I'm really happy. Uh, I think this, um, yes, it, it's hard. Pandemics are hard. I don't think none of us have ever experienced one in our lifetimes. But there is hope. And we're, we're seeing that play out. Eva Marie, you are a Christian educator. Even though we've gone virtual, the Christian education hasn't stopped. How have you been able to develop faith formations in an online capacity? Thank you for asking that question. It has been a very interesting time, and I'm going to piggyback on a phrase that both Jen and Jose Luis used in creating sacred space. I've been helping to um, enable families, children, elder adults, all ages to create sacred space or have faith formation time at their homes. And we started this very quickly with our Sunday school classes, switching over to Zoom for their sessions, a lot of classes using YouTube to upload their sessions and to have time with their people that way. But it also was a fun time to make some jumps into things like camp in a box. Um, I would have never thought I'd have to figure out how to do camp in a box, but we did it. And we're able to provide outdoor activities for families to engage in, in their own homes or in their own neighborhoods. And I asked people to send back pictures to me of what they're doing. And the pictures I got back were amazing. Um, there are lots of tears shed at my end for us not even being able to have camp and then to get to see the families actually engaging in camp type activities and sending us the pictures was very meaningful. So we had camp in a box, we had vacation Bible school in a bag, we had our Bible boot camp in a box, our fifth grade blessing in a bag. So we're learning to be creative uh, with activities that people can still, can, can still um, enrich their faith formation and their time together, but through being at home or through online. We were able to move all of our adult discipleship classes to the Zoom format, and so um, we can still have our Bible studies. We actually will be having two Bible studies ongoing. We will be having spiritual practices classes and life application classes continuing online. Um, I have to say, too, one of the things that really surprised me was when we did our drive through blessing of backpacks and devices and invited people to come to the church at a designated time. 
uh, the number of people who came and then how absolutely wonderful it was to see people with your own eyes that I wasn't prepared for how that would feel um, I think I'm still smiling my heart is still full from that those two days of getting to see people in real life and I could tell that they were thrilled to get to come to the church even if it was to stay in their cars and to, to see each other um, this coming Sunday, we're having our third grade Bible scavenger hunt. Um, we're learning there's some traditions that we have at Boston Avenue for Christian education that must go on. And one of those is definitely the presentation of Bibles to our third graders. And so we've designed a scavenger hunt outside around the building where the children will receive a clue and a, an item relating to a Bible at each stop. And then their final stop will be to actually receive their third grade Bible. So we're hoping that that can still be a meaningful, wonderful experience for our children and families there. Um, a way that we're going to continue faith formation or creating sacred space in the homes is by providing porch prayers to our families. Those will be either something they receive in the mail. Snail mail is still so much fun to receive. And so reaching out in that way, each mailed item will have a spiritual practice that they can um, share together in their homes. And then every so often we'll have a porch drop off, which will be um, a spiritual practice with the actual ingredients, you might say, to do that practice, be it a gratitude cafe and having packets of hot chocolate available for families to use as they participate in their gratitude gratitude cafe. So I'm looking forward to that and ways to continue um, helping families and, and I'll have faith formation through their home. Thank you so much, Eva Marie. As you can tell, a lot of um, our listeners can tell a lot of ministries are changing. Um, new ministries are being formed. Um, it's getting, giving us a chance to use our creativity um, that we might have not done um, at a different time. So I would like to thank you all um, for joining us today. This has been the Ascends at Boston Avenue podcast. Our producer is Alicia Urban. Our theme music was composed and performed by Wyatt Smith. Boston Avenue United Methodist Church is a progressive historic church located in downtown Tulsa, Oklahoma. Please check out our social media for more information on what's going on at Boston Avenue UMC. We can be found on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. We'll talk to you next time. Thank you.